What if I told you you could have more power than a Steam Deck OLED in the same size as a Switch Lite? Not the Switch OLED or the Switch 2, the Switch Lite. Meet the GPD Win 4 2025 with a Ryzen 9 AI HX370 and a Radeon 890M. Yeah, the name sucks ass, but the handheld does not suck ass. So here's the one minute summary so you don't have to watch the whole video if you're pressed for time. If you want the absolute smallest and most powerful handheld PC, this is it. For its size, nothing else on the market that I'm aware of can touch it when it comes to performance. It really is built different. It's more powerful than the Z1 Extreme in the likes of the ROG Ally X or Lenovo Legion Go, and more powerful than the Steam Deck OLED, and it is significantly smaller than both of those handhelds. As far as form factor goes, it's almost the exact same dimensions of the Switch Lite, which is already the smallest version of the Switch, but when it comes comes to thickness, it's more like two Switch lights glued together. Now, recently we've been getting rumors about the ROG Ally 2, which will probably outperform this, but unfortunately, I don't have anything concrete to go on, so I can't really speculate, but when I do get my hands on it, and I will, I'll be sure to do a comparison, so sub if you wanna see that. What's most impressive about the chipset in the Win 4 is performance per watt. When at 18 watts, the Win 4 offers slightly better performance than the ROG Ally X, even when the ROG Ally X is at 28 watts. And if you stick to that 18 watt TDP on the Win 4, you can get pretty solid battery life. I was getting anywhere between two hours on the low end to if you drop the TDP and a few other settings, I could squeeze out a few hours. The most I was able to get in my battery marathon test was about six hours after dropping my settings and playing dead cells. But if you use the full 30 watts, you're gonna get more like an hour, actually, just a little bit less than an hour. Like any handheld, it's very dependent on the game itself, and while the Win 4 has a 44 watt hour battery, the ROG Ally X has basically double that battery size. So even though the Win 4 is more efficient with its chipset, it simply can't compete with its relatively smaller battery. I mean, even the Steam Deck OLED has a 50 watt hour battery and that has a max TDP of 15 watts, not 30 watts. That's just one of the sacrifices that you have to make when you're getting in these smaller chassis compared to the competition. And this tiny form factor has a few other drawbacks, the biggest one for me being ergonomics. Because it's so small, it fits in my hands more like a really thick switch, AKA it's a board and boards aren't that comfortable to hold. To put it lightly, it doesn't have much in the way of grips, which I don't love, and it also has a small screen at 6 inches, which doesn't sound that much different than the Steam Deck OLED 7.4 inch screen, but when you do the math, the OLED screen on the Steam Deck is about 60% larger, and at least for me, I think the screen is a bit too small for the stuff that I like to play, but if you're coming from something like the Switch Lite, then the Win 4 screen is slightly bigger and much sharper at 1080p. Probably the biggest drawback with the screen for me, other than its size, is that it's only 60 hertz, where in 2025, even the Switch 2 is getting 120 hertz screen, so this feels like a huge miss. In fact, this is the only handheld I've reviewed in the last year that has a 60 hertz refresh rate screen. And especially given that this is the most powerful one that I've reviewed, I am shocked that GPD didn't toss a higher refresh rate screen in it. It's the only glaring missing feature to me, as as far as hardware is concerned. And the last big complaint I have is related to its size, and it is the fan. The fan noise is really bad. And even though it's loud, where your hands rest also gets warm to the touch, and so you're gonna have sweaty hands when you're running at higher wattages. It's great if you wanna use it as a hand warmer in the winter, but other than that, it is less than ideal to say the least. I guess I do have one more complaint, and that's using Windows on a handheld. The sleep settings, absolutely suck, but I do have a fix for that, which we're going to get into later, so stick around. All right, so that is the fast and dirty review. If you appreciate me putting the summary up at the front of the video, feel free to like and subscribe, but there's a lot more to it, so let's get into the weeds. And let's start with the hardware itself. This handheld was sent over for review from WhatGeek, but it's not a sponsored review. Everything in this video are my thoughts and my opinions. They are offering viewers of this channel 12% off their entire site using 
code SAM12. So please check them out and support the channel. I'll leave a link in the description. All right, so starting with the hardware, the Win4 is really tiny. And I know I said that already, but seriously, look at this thing compared to the Steam Deck. It really is almost exactly the same size as two Switch lights glued together, which considering just how powerful it is, that's crazy. It's got a slide up screen that reveals a tiny baby keyboard for tiny babies. I didn't find myself using the keyboard hardly at all for typing, but being able to easily alt tab out of a game real quick or type in a password was more useful than I was expecting it to be. That being said, I would still much prefer having a thinner device than having the keyboard, but whatever, it's got it. As far as inputs go, there just isn't that much room for buttons on this thing, but GPD sure crammed them in there. On the left, we have a joystick, numpad, select, Select and fingerprint reader, all of which feel pretty good. While the joystick is larger than something like the Switch, it's still quite a bit smaller than a full-size joystick on something like the Steam Deck or an Xbox controller. And I definitely prefer the full-size joystick, if you know what I mean. The D-pad is more clicky than the Steam Deck and I really like how it feels. It also has a slider that changes the input from keyboard and mouse to controller, which I really appreciate because Windows is awful at doing that switch and it's got a micro SD card slot. On the right side, we have our ABXY buttons, right joystick, start button, menu button, and the smallest trackpad I have ever seen in my life. My first thought was there is no way that you can actually use this because it's about the same size as my pinky fingernail but as it turns out, it is surprisingly useful for how small it is. You can use it in a pinch, but you're not gonna be playing Counter-Strike on it, unlike every other trackpad on every other handheld. <laughs> Come on, there we go, okay. Keep going for the joystick, because it's muscle memory. This is how well the trackpad works. I didn't think it was gonna be this hard. <laughs> I genuinely thought I'd be able to use the trackpad and like play kind of okay. And that leads me to another problem I have with these inputs, which is when I'm trying to press the A button, I end up bumping the joystick around. The funny thing is the inputs are almost the exact same on the Switch Lite, but I don't bump the joystick on the Switch Lite. The difference is the Switch Lite has a shorter joystick and so they don't get in the way. It's a trade-off and I probably still prefer the higher joysticks because they're more accurate and more useful for me personally. But just know because of how tiny the Win4 is, the inputs are all crammed together Together, and you might bump into one when you're going for another. Then we've got our regular L1, L2, R1, R2. They feel clicky and responsive, although a little bit shallow for my like. And then the two buttons on the back, you might call them L4 and R4. I had to disable these buttons almost immediately because I kept pressing them by accident. I think one of the problems is that it's really hard to tell if your finger is actually on the button or if it's just on the back panel because they're flush with the back panel. And while there is a slight texture difference, I wasn't able to tell if my fingers were on the back panel or on on the button itself, so I kept bumping the button, so I had to turn them off. They weren't useful for me, but your mileage may vary. We've also got a Type-C port on both the top and the bottom, which is awesome to see. Valve, I hope you do that in the next Steam Deck. And it's even got an Oculink port for connecting an eGPU, which I love to see. Overall, my thoughts on the hardware is that it feels sturdy and well-built. It actually feels like a tank because of how heavy and condensed and small it is, but it doesn't feel like it has the same level of uh, polish as something like the Steam Deck OLED or the ROG Ally X, in my opinion. The ergonomics aren't great, but if you're wanting something small, that's just kind of what you get. If you want it small, it's not going to have good ergonomics. That's just how things are, unfortunately. Now let's talk about performance. Watt for watt, the Win4 is a beast. Using the Steam Deck preset on Cyberpunk at 1080p, we're getting around 44 FPS, which is almost identical to the ROG Ally X's 43 FPS. The difference is that's with the Win4 only using 18 watts, whereas the ROG Ally X is using 25 watts. That is awesome efficiency. The problem for me is if you bump up the wattage on the Win4, the performance barely increases. We're talking about a 10% performance bump for nearly double the wattage. So I really wouldn't recommend using higher wattages on the Win4, especially because when you do use those higher wattages, it is just so damn loud. Listen to this. This is after running Running the Cyberpunk benchmark at 18 watts. That's the lower wattage, and it is still loud as hell.
And if you do use the 30 watt profile, you're also going to be getting an hour or less of battery life. So seriously, use the 30 watts with caution. I would say this is more of an 18 watt device and you can use 30 watts if you wanna plug in and use it, but I wouldn't use it unless you really have to. Where the GPD shines is at 18 watts and less, then the fan noise isn't quite as bad and the battery life is more reasonable. And speaking of battery, in my worst case Elden Ring drain test, which is max brightness, max TDP, max everything, I got just under an hour, which is terrible. But if you drop the TDP to 18 watts, which again, you only lose around 10% of your performance and then maybe drop the brightness a hair and limit your FPS to 40, then you can get around two to three hours, which at least for me is good enough to be usable. Again, we have to keep our expectations in check because this really is a tiny device and smaller devices just have smaller batteries. And that's the way physics worked for as long as physics have been physics, I think. I'm not sure. And now we got to talk about the user experience and I'm going to be real with you. Oh, it's not great. It's not great. Say what you want, but using Windows on a handheld PC is just not a good experience. I've used a bunch of Windows handhelds at this point and I still don't really like it. I can use it and I can game on it and it's totally fine, but it's not a great experience. But there are two things that you can do to make your experience 10 times better. Number one, go to Windows settings and change the sleep setting to hibernate. This will mostly, and I say mostly, it's gonna mostly stop the GPD from continuing to run games even after you press the power button. That is generally one of my biggest complaints about Windows handhelds is that asleep settings are absolutely terrible. By default, if you press the power button, it'll turn the screen off and put the device to sleep, but then it continues to just run the game in the background with the screen off. And if you come back in an hour, your device is gonna be dead. This has been off for maybe an hour. Um, I was playing Red Dead and I just hit the power button to sleep it and if I don't know if you can hear it but fan is still going so I want to see if I turn the screen on is it just running Red Dead to see it but here's a little tip so the screen is black I've noticed it does this a lot but if I alt tab I can alt tab into Red Dead and look at that it's running Red Dead What's scary about that is if you put it to sleep and then toss it in a case or toss it in your backpack, there is a good chance it's going to cook itself because it's got no airflow and it's generating all this heat. Hibernate, on the other hand, it works a lot better, but I still had some issues where it would wake itself up from a hibernate for no apparent reason, and then when I went to play, the battery was dead. And a surprise to absolutely no one, Windows sleep settings are still god awful. There are a few things that will help, but I haven't found a cure all. And while hibernate makes the handheld actually useful as a handheld, it makes the whole instant resume idea kind of a joke. Here's an example. I'm running Cyberpunk on both the Steam Deck and the GPD, and I put both to sleep using a tap of the power button, which puts it to hibernate on the GPD. Now let's see how long it takes for each device to get back into the game. And this might seem like kind of a small deal, maybe it doesn't matter to you, and depending on how you use your device, it might actually be a small deal. But at least for me, I like to pick up and play for five or 10 minutes at a time for just a quick break from whatever I'm doing. And so having the GPD take so much longer to wake up, well, cuts into gaming time. And, <laughs> and I also experienced that every time it wakes back up, it says the controller has disconnected. And sometimes if you just press a button, then it says, okay, the controller is reconnected. But sometimes you have to alt tab out of the game and then alt tab back in to get the controller to work again. I don't know why this is. It's just another quirk of using Windows. And I pretty regularly would put the GPD to sleep via Hibernate. And then when I came back, the game had crashed and I had to do a full reboot of the device. And to be honest, no one instance of dealing with something like this is that big of a deal, but when it happens frequently, and this is every time you turn on the device, at least for me, it makes it feel like a DIY project instead of a thousand dollar plus fancy handheld. The next easy fix is after you get all your drivers updated and your Windows updates ran, tell Steam to open in big picture mode on startup. Big picture mode works pretty well and more importantly, it's a controller friendly interface, so it's going to be easy to get around on the GPD. You're still gonna have to alt tab out sometimes because of a pop-up or a glitch or whatever because Windows is Windows, but it helps a lot. With that being said, I still don't like using Windows on a handheld. It's really fiddly. It's hard to touch stuff on the screen because the screen is tiny and fingers are big. And then if you use the trackpad, 
the trackpad is too small for me to use comfortably, so it's just a mess. This isn't part of this review, but I'm planning on installing SteamOS on here via Bazite, so sub if that's something you wanna see. Anyways, if you've used Windows on a handheld, you know what you're getting yourself into. It's totally doable, you can make workarounds, but just know that it's not going to be a seamless console experience, which is what you would have on something like a Nintendo Switch or a Steam Deck OLED. You will have to tinker with it, and that goes for all the Windows handhelds that I've used so far. So that's the GPD Win 4. It's a fantastic little device for the right person. Unfortunately for me, I am not the right person. I prefer a bigger screen, quieter fans, longer battery life, and less tinkering. But as long as you know what you're getting yourself into, I could see someone absolutely loving this little device because there really is nothing like it in this form factor with this amount of power. All right, that's it. See ya.